Well, good evening and welcome to this week's episode of Wounds with a View. Because it's Lesbian Visibility Week this week, we've got uh, five, so I'm just counting them, five wombs and they certainly have some views. So first of all, I'm, I'm going to introduce them in alphabetical order so there's no tears. Um, and then we'll start with the, the, the questions. And it, it, it's fairly informal, so it won't, it's not like a panel, we won't be, you know, taking turns. But obviously, we, we try not to speak over each other. All right, so introducing first off, Aja, Aja, um, uh, is a poet and activist from uh, West London. She's currently, for her uh, 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 pride and delectation, banned from both Mumsnet and blocked from Stonewell. So she's obviously doing something right. <laughs> Next, we have Angela Wilde. Angela is an artist and activist best known for her lesbian advocacy with the group Get the L Out. In 1918, she published Lesbians at Ground Zero, one of the first pieces of research investigating the impact of transgenderism and the cotton ceiling rhetoric on lesbians. Then we have Julia Diana Robinson, or as she's asked to be called, JD Robinson. Julia is an award-winning author and senior editor in the Velvet Chronicles. She is one of the first volunteers to write about the harmful impact of gender identity uh, uh, ideology on young lesbians and gender non-conforming women. Then we have Lucy Massoud. Lucy is a barrister and former firefighter and Fire Brigade Union's LGBT Secretary for London. She's best known for her advocacy on behaviour so on behalf of the Fire Brigade Union following the Grenfell fire, where she worked closely with this legal team uh, assisting in the Grenville inquiry. And last but not least, Summer Seeley. Summer is a lesbian who resides in Portland, Oregon, so we've got, we've got our tentacles go a long way away. Having previously identified as non-binary, she's been gender critical for three years and struggles to juggle her online and real life identities, don't we all? So that's our uh, that's our wounds for this week. So first of all, uh, the first question we're going to ask, and um, as I say, just whoever whoever gets whoever speaks first can start on it. So the first question is, what are your top news stories for 2021 with a lesbian age? Ellen Page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if, if not, I will nominate someone. <laughs> I heard someone say Ellen Page. Uh, yeah, I, that's the only thing I could think of. I've been under a rock for the past year, but Ellen Page, I was pretty um, distraught about when that happened. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. It's just like having a lesbian um, icon, I guess, from, from my perspective, then becoming a straight man. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I, I wanted to uh, to talk about that as well um, as as a main piece and and uh, and mainly I, I was really struck by the timing. I don't know if that came across in your mind as well at the fact that she announced her transition one day after the Terra case ruling. Uh, called me conspiracy theorist. I think the transgenderist lobby is extremely strategic, and I just couldn't think that was a coincidence. Would you think? You know. Yeah. I For the I'm record, I want to say that I said she wasn't a lesbian at one point. <laughs> and I had a theory she was not a lesbian. And then after that, you know, this whole thing kind of blew up in the media and I was like, Kel Surprise. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all for people sort of living their best life if they want to go through that transition, if that helps them to be a better person in their mind, then of course they should do it. But it just seems since that's happened, every time you see Elliot, as they are now, just seems completely miserable. Um, I mean, I, I don't really know Elliot when Elliot was Ellen particularly. I've watched a few films and all the rest of it. Um, but now every time Elliot is on screen, she just looks so utterly, thoroughly miserable. It doesn't look like she's living her best life at all. Um, so I just, I just worry. I, I remember when I heard the story, I remember thinking, I think I even posted about it. I really hope this works out for Elliot and I really hope Elliot is happy moving forward but I kind of I'm not convinced that will be the outcome I hope it will be the outcome everyone deserves to be happy but Elliot doesn't look happy at the minute 
Yeah, I like the name change. Elliot's a badass name. Um, but other than that, I do feel like there could be some confusion. And I, I hate to say that because obviously we're talking about a grown up. But I think there's a lot of confusion when I read this, like the articles and stuff about, well, I like these clothes and I liked short hair and I wanted this name. So ergo, and it's like, oh, maybe, I don't know. She needs a circle or of, of people around, you know, to talk and be like, I don't know. I, think, um, I don't know. She, she's a grown up. Yes. But she's, she's a child star. Like she started acting when she was 10. She's right. Been, in that hypertoxic, super misogynistic, monstrous system that is Hollywood. I don't know true, how, true. you know, we can develop a sense of ourselves when we are women in a place like this. If mm. she's a lesbian, it's probably even worse. Right. Um, and, and I think we need, we need to, to, come to come. I've heard a lot of anger from lesbian and I, I understand, you know, I, I've watched a lot of her films. I'm not young, young, but I can imagine if, you know, <laughs> like young lesbian have somebody to look up to. Right. And suddenly that lesbian becomes a man. There's like going to be some disappointment, some anger, but I cannot see her as anything but a victim. And I agree with you, Lucy. She, she, there was this clip today where she was interviewed and she looked, uh, more than that, she looked traumatized. She, she, this looked like a woman who's traumatized. I'm very, very worried and concerned. It's terrible. Yeah. I think she, well, was, she wasn't she? she like, she looks so thin as well. There seems, I mean, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but there seem to be, well, there seems to be some kind of maybe body issues going on. Um, and I, I mean, I, I'm not angry at all. It's nothing to do with me, it's none of my business. It's, you know, they can do what they want with themselves. Um, but it, I can see it would be disappointing for younger lesbians. Um, and I, I, I just hope Elliot is okay. That's, you know, the, the, the conclusion of the story is that they're okay. And if, if, Elliot decides to come back to Ellen and be a lesbian again, I'm sure we would open her with, 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 with open arms. What would have been really powerful because there's still to this day, it's 2021 and we've still only had one butch lesbian actress exactly. ever um, in a mainstream TV show as playing a main, like a main role or even main adjacent role. There's still only ever been one. So what would have been really badass and powerful is if, you know, she'd come out and been like, look, this is who I am. This is how I dress. This is the way I do my hair. Give me a freaking role anyway. Because it seems like whenever you see lesbians on TV, they either have to fit the role model of what people want us to be, which isn't realistic to the world I know, to the world I grew up in, where maybe I might have been the most... I'm going to do air quotes, feminine kind of person out there at the time, you know, it would have been badass to have somebody come out and be like, give me a role anyway. And to see, like, do you get the role? Because the answer might have been no. But I think that's because there's a big problem with people who look, who don't look the part that want to play either a lesbian or, you know, whatever on TV. There's a big problem with um, nonconformity in mainstream media. So it'd been kind of cool to see, uh, would you have still gotten any parts? I do think the answer would be no though. You're gonna get the parts this way, but you're not gonna get them that way. It's kind of like you get the sense in mainstream of admit you're a man and we'll hook you up. I think that says more about the system that it says about her as an individual, possibly. I mean, and, and the world she lives in, you know. It may be it may I remember, sorry, I remember kind of back in the day when you had these child stars, they, you know, they went through the whole drug addict stage and their rebellious stage and all the rest of it. Maybe this is just the new drug addict's rebellious stage is that you don't go that way anymore. Now you, now the thing that's fed into you and that, that you're bombarded with um, is, is transitioning. Maybe, you know, children stars years ago would be offered a line of coke at a party. Now it's just gender ideology. Mm. Even more dangerous. Stick with the coke children. <laughs> I was also concerned with how quickly she got top surgery yeah. and I didn't know like I didn't know if she had just been been in therapy for a while and just hadn't told anybody uh, but it seemed like really quick it was within what a month of coming out that she got top surgery and then yeah it was just really concerning because that's I mean that's basically what I just couldn't help but to think of myself you know like I got top surgery super quick after 
identifying for less than a year as non-binary and they, I was never asked to go to therapy. And, <clears throat> and so I just, yeah, it was really concerning to see how quickly that happened and how everybody just didn't question it at all. <laughs> and she got divorced. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah right. she did. She got divorced. But, but yeah, I can't remember the, the 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 timeline, but certainly within a week or a day, or a couple of yeah, days. Yeah, it was and super quick. Decided enough was enough. But it was, yeah. I mean, clearly, you know, the <sighs> wife either wasn't hanging around or wasn't wanted anymore. And it's nice we have a panel of lesbians because I think stuff like what they now call chest dysphoria. I'm going to do a lot of air quotes today. I think it's so common among lesbians even even the more like uh, feminine appearing uh lesbians or fitting the stereotypes of what we know to be feminine or, or femininity i think there's a big misunderstanding there about this is an issue for a lot of lesbians a lot of us kind of have, the, have these issues around the chest you know there's a lot of expectations we grew up with there's a lot of, of shit that's put on us because of who we are um and what we look like that's going to impact body image. Yeah, like earlier, like when I was kind of going through that whole thing, I was trying to be perceived as a little bit more masculine. And I have such a feminine face. And, you know, I'm five, six. I'm not super tall. I'm not, I'm somewhat curvy. So I, I guess I thought for some reason in my head that it would help me to attain this like slightly more androgynous lesbian appearance so that I could be perceived that way. And I'm not like that anymore. I'm, I mean, I'm more comfortable with myself, but it was definitely, um, yeah, <laughs> that shouldn't have been my go-to way of dealing with that at all. And it should have been more questioned, I think, by people around me, but I was 18, so I was an adult, <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. Technically an adult, but of course, not having reached full cognitive brain development until you're around the age of yeah. 25. And that's at 23, kind of, I started questioning it. I was like 23 right. and now I'm 25 and I'm like, wow, totally yeah. regret that. Would never have done that if I had made that decision now. I mean, imagine getting locked into some of the decisions you thought were the right decisions at the age of 18. Imagine getting locked into those. Yeah. Like, boom, that's your life. Have that for you. The thing with Elliot Page is if, if it does come to a point where she regrets it the stick the shit she will get from from that community she i mean if anything she'd probably be pressured to to, to stay on that path i don't think she would ever i don't think she would yeah. <laughs> I, think, I don't think she if, would even if she personally regrets it i think this at some point the tide is going to turn and uh, the trans ideology is not ideology is not going to be trendy anymore and people will attack her for that the people that are supporting her now will attack her for that because she's so public about it even if she doesn't change her mind. And I feel so sorry for her. I've seen that little clip of her, the preview on the Oprah interview, and she just looks Miserable. very vulnerable. And like, she just needs a hug and she should not be on the, like, the world stage like that at all. Yeah. yeah. I hope it works out for her, I really do, but what can you do? So is that Elliot um, taken care of? Yeah. Next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh hello so i'm sorry i've been muted i just wanted to say um that for me what what is a, a really horrible aspect of all this is that it's all done publicly you know mm, if, right. if it's anybody else you know you deal with your shit it's hard it's horrible but she's been pushed and promoted so much mm -hmm. you know to to from that that fight and and uh and it's really, really heartbreaking to see it. And I just wanted to say also that, um, you know, we see maybe wrongly, I think very wrongly, these celebrities, especially female celebrities, as being disempowered women who are totally in charge of their life, have kind of transcended, you know, women's oppression and are kind of free agent. And they're not. Like, they're a clog in a system which is there to promote an ideology. And this is exactly how I think she's used in that, in right. that, uh, in that moment. And I, I, again, I can only, only empathize and feel sorry. Um, I just hope she comes out. And, and also that we're talking about the queer, but there's, there's two elements, there's the queer element and there's the Hollywood element. And yeah, so I think the fact that she's a child star plays into what you've just said. She's being used so much. So much. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've seen it in other ways with child actors before. And this is just a new version of it. I think that one of the also difficult parts about it is, is the gaslighting. 
you know, the sense that we're supposed to now look back on Juno and look at the pregnancy, you know, the, the character getting pregnant and then call that character a male. So it's like there's this kind of big mind game going on. And we see that happening a lot. You know, like I've said a few times around the house, I've said pregnant people and my wife will correct me. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've been brainwashed. Like, this is real. This is yeah. real. It's really happening. Like we are, our brains are being like reprogrammed in how we speak. And that actually impacts your brain. It impacts the way that you're processing your, you know, how you process words, how you perceive the world. I think in an interview, I even said uh, sex worker. <laughs> and I'm not someone who believes that, that uh, you know, sex work is work. But you hear something so many times and particularly if you grew up i think in a household where english wasn't the only language spoken you know it's we kind of will process words a little bit differently so it, it's kind of this whole mind fuck that's been happening and you almost have to stop playing the game to get out yeah. of that mind fuck because being in it is kind of dangerous you kind of toe the line between reality and a false reality you know that's being sold to you and you're being told this is real this is real this is real if you buy into it even a little bit you kind of run the risk of walking around your own house being like pregnant people what's up you know it kind of shifts the way your brain processes stuff so i've kind of had to make a decision um to be a little more aware of how I'm being impacted by the world around me and how I'm being brainwashed, even as a strong woman, as a feminist, as a lesbian, it's still possible to take some of that in and have it really impact your day-to-day -day life. I completely agree, Julia. Like it's, it's, it has to be a conscious effort if it would feel but you know, for me, I, I refuse to do the pronoun thing. I will never do it. I don't care. I mean, I have, I'm lucky. I'm not working. I'm, not, I'm working in employment. I don't have to deal with that on an on employment level. But I, I found out that very often I have conversation with women where they tell me a story and I find it there's something confusing. I can't really point what it is. And always, it's really mad, always it's a misgendering thing. They've been calling a man a woman. And my brain is like, oh, what's going on? And then... You know, you're absolutely right. It does something to the brain. We have it to impacts how connect. you process something that you're saying completely. It's it's there's a connection between the words that you're using, which is why it's so powerful that they're trying to force people to change their words. If you can force people to change their words, you can impact how their brain is processing the information, period. So when it comes to certain friends of mine, like, yeah, you know, like Buck Angel, I'll say um you know he's a great guy and da, da 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 i don't mind in some situations like having that brain you know that impact if i know okay you've been around for a while you've been doing this for a while like this has been it's not something like overnight what like with um elliot page um i don't want to have to reroute if I'm not really sure that you haven't been impacted by the current gender ideology happening right now, because I feel like I'm not really helping you in any way, shape or form to take your non-reality and make it my reality. I don't want to live like in a, in a state of like non-reality. Something's going on right now. We're all well aware of it. But Something as specific is happening in this moment in time that wasn't happening before. It wasn't happening like, you know, 20 years. So you got like the OG transsexuals like Buck Angel. I don't think that this what's happening now was happening then. We certainly weren't going after children. No, and it's, it's interesting to see how those rules also um, affect trans people. So if, if you're a trans person who dares step out of that echo chamber, and I know Lots of people have a lot to say about Caitlyn Jenner. I find Caitlyn Jenner quite interesting because Caitlyn Jenner is hated by the trans community. I think he's put himself up now to, to run as, as, as governor in California. Um, and he was, he was mis I think he did an interview recently and he was misgendered a number of times. And everyone was jumping up and down like lunatics about it. And he just came out and tweeted going, I don't care. Like, you know, it's, it's not important. It's really not important. Call me he, call me she, whatever. Um, his children call him Adfil, 
Um, and he, he's just very, I think he was a Republican, and he probably voted Trump, but he just goes against everything that you should be in favour of if you're trans. And they can't stand him. The hatred he gets is probably, you know, it's, it's on the scale of the hatred we get because he stepped outside of that echo chamber and they don't like it. And he is very much, yeah, call me what you want. I don't care. It's not that important, actually. What's important is that I'm happy. I'm doing what I want. I'm not hurting anyone. Um, and it's not enough for them. It's not enough. And it was quite interesting to see how he went from front cover of Vanity Fair, hero, everyone's hero, to in a really, really, really short space of time, people hurling abuse at him, like five feet away, hurling abuse at him for the sole reason that he came out and said that he was a Republican. So why are we surprised that Bruce Jenner is a Republican? He's been a Republican the whole of, you know, season one to season eight of the Kardashians. What, because he transitions, all of a sudden he's got to be some Birkenstock wearing lefty. It's nonsense. But again, it's it's just that you have to follow these rules. And if you step outside, doesn't matter what you are, whether you're lesbian, trans, they will throw you into the fire. Yeah. Mm. Yes, sadly, very true. Um, I think we all agree, obviously, in terms of Ellen Elliot, that you know we we, we hope that it ends up well for her. But um, yeah, we all agree too that it doesn't look good. Not convinced in the same way I wasn't convinced back in the day, and I'm online saying it that that she was a lesbian. Not convinced about this either. Mm. Wasn't convinced then. Not convinced now. I think something's going on there. I think there's like almost this. Um, need to I identify with with an oppressed class or something going on there, um, you know, become the martyr, become that so you can be the martyr, you know, be the figure, be the face of type of a deal is mm -hmm. something something I get the sense is going on there doesn't sit right. Well, it's certainly the way that you you score points nowadays, isn't it? I mean, it's how how right. high up are you on the on on the victim ladder? Right. Um, but she's I don't know. I don't know. I, I get like the one token role, but that's going to be it. It's not. She's not going to be able to um, to make a career out of it. it. It it will literally be one token role. There you go, and then that's mm. it. Maybe a few bit parts. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, what, what what can they cast her as? Largely, but, you know. I'm if, not if sure not if you get the trans man, uh, they'll, they'll all scream. Yeah. You know. Not sure if we get as much bonus point if we come out as lesbian as if we come out as trans. I, I'm not sure there's anything to gain when she said she was gay. Um, as nope. uh, you know. So no. I, I wouldn't, yeah. I, wouldn't doubt her. I wouldn't doubt her that, you know, coming out as lesbian is just uh, when you say that you've been a rape victim, you know, you're not doing that to get any kind of <laughs> anything. You're not going to get anything from society. You're going to get some shit. So I, I, I don't think it's, it's an equivalent. For me, it's not an equivalent when she came out as a lesbian and when she came out as trans. Um, and she's also obsessed with trans, trans kids, trans kids, trans kids. She's really pushing this idea that we go ahead and, you know, in the U.S. where we're doing double mastectomies on kids as young as 12 and 13 right now. And you're and you're putting kids on, uh, you're medicalizing them as young as eight. You know, she's really pushing this trans kids thing. So there's something funny going on there. I, like, why would you want these kids to become medicalized way before they ever have a chance to reach full cognitive brain development? You have the opportunity to grow up. Why don't why are you trying to take that opportunity away from these kids? I suspect that um, she's very vulnerable and the, the trans activists have gotten hold of her and they uh, essentially she's her tool or she's their tool and they're just pushing her out there saying right this is this is what we want this is our agenda this is what you need to push you're the role model at the moment you're the person who is responsible for speaking for the whole trans community and these poor children blah 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 um, it's your duty to do it. It, it like again seeing that clip on Oprah you just think, oh God, is that, you know, it's, it's just vacant behind the eyes, so miserable, not um, not really, like there's no body language going on, almost like a ghost of, of mm. Ellen, what Ellen, uh, Ellen was. So I imagine she's just being used as a tool, very vulnerable and being taken advantage of, which is really sad because it's someone's mm. life at the end of the day and, and, and we want the best for her. Um, let's hope they, they treat her well. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I know which side my money would be on in terms of how well she's treated, but... Uh, hmm. 
All right, so um, the next uh, question, and this is, um, oh, hang on, it's, it's just scrolled up, hang on a sec, scroll that down again, uh, from uh, Agar, it's the Notorious, her dating application. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about her, the lesbian dating website or app that's for everyone. Uh, <laughs> and that whole <laughs> shabargo, because... Um, I first found it a couple of years ago, maybe 2019 or the beginning of 2020, when I was um, looking for a girlfriend. So I signed up there and the first thing that uh, hit me was the number of sexualities there was. I checked today and there's 18 different sexualities, 17 different genders. So yeah, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> I was on there only for maybe about three or four days and there was a lot of penis coming my way so I just completely left that and forgot about it until um the whole Graham Linehan thing which I think is hilarious and I think he has made the point even though some people completely refuse to accept his point but he's perfectly allowed like valid to be on there why not if other men are allowed on there why can't he be on there um and another story um let's see if I can share my screen to do with her they have a uh, email that they send out and they have sent out. Mm. Share it. Yeah, I saw this. Um, can you see this? I see a bit of it, yeah. You can scroll. It's basically an email about microdosing uh, cross sex hormones and how it's a wonderful thing to do. I don't know. I can't. I can't see it on my screen. I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah, we, we, we can see bits of it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's basically sent out to um, sub subscribers of the dating app about how great microdosing is and how you should try it, and it's wonderful. And I think this is part of the problem with with lesbians or women like uh, Ellen Page because they're being fed this nonsense. Mm. And yeah, basically that's what I want to talk about the her. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually on her and I've been on it for a while because I've been single forever um, and interestingly ages ago when I first became single I signed up to you know that date it, no, it's not dating that app called meetup where you just go out with friends oh, yeah. and there was yeah. one in my local area I'm in tooting it was like a, a tooting curry for lesbians I was like oh I'm a lesbian I like curry so I went out to that and the woman who ran it, and she runs the particular meetup group for lesbians, but she calls it queer with Wimex, with the X and all that. And she was there and uh, there was a trans woman there and they were having a conversation I overheard. And she said to this trans woman something about, oh, we go to this place. If we see any turfs, we set them on fire, throw them in the street. I was, I was with a friend who had to kind of almost hold me back. <laughs> it turns out that this person is one of the main people on her who runs her app because mm -hmm. I've, I've seen this person pop up um and then it says in like occupation it says works for um creator or something um of her and it makes perfect sense this person is just utterly utterly gross and having been on on her whenever i see a, a, a guy um i will report it nothing will happen the the the, the profile will stay there so it's not even an app that says, right, you have to be a woman or identify as a woman. It's an app for lesbians, but you can be a man who identifies as a man. It's 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 really quite gross. Yeah. I hate the it fact seems it seems almost more lesbians. like a place for people to shop for lesbians. Like yeah. if you're looking for lesbians, but you're a man or a non-binary person or anybody else, you can come here to shop for them and look at them. Like I don't know. It's just I have a whole Facebook page that I run called Women Seeking Women Starring Men just for me posting all the men I find on her and <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah, on, on, the, on the issue of the dating site and the uh, violence against lesbians, we, um, Get the Alert started this uh, web page recently called Lesbian Me Too, and the idea is to report, uh, for, uh, to give a space for lesbians to, to report sexual um, harassment or rape they've, they've encountered by male, including by men who identify as whatever they think they are. And um, 
so I, I wanted to say this because it's really important, like, you know, after the cotton ceiling research, we um, basically have been faced with a big silence from the LGBT, it doesn't happen, doesn't exist, we don't want to look there. And I think it's really important that we prove, you know, that, that it's not just the women I interviewed for that research and women are reporting their stories, their cotton ceiling stories, a lot of it happened through dating sites. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, we have publicly shared a lot of screenshots from dating sites, including some from her. Uh, and it was quite epic. <laughs> I had to block the, 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 um, the account for a few weeks because uh, of, of the threats we were getting. They just don't like to be, you know, to be seen. Somehow they like to be seen, but they don't like to be seen as perpetrators. And uh, this is what they are. It's a, it's a very dismal time, I think, for young lesbians. And when I think about it, it's so overwhelming to think of the life that I had, the opportunities I had to meet my wife, like to fall in love, to be in a world and just be and not have to think about every single little thing or worry that someone's going to set me on fire or wants to set me on fire. Like, what the fuck is going on right now that this is okay to want to set lesbians on fire for drawing boundaries and being like, Th these are my sexual boundaries. Lesbians are exclusively, exclusively innately attracted to other females and have that be questioned. Like what has happened in our world? And I feel so bad when I think about how this must be harming young lesbians. I'm like, whoa, it's a lot to process, to try to even process what their world must be like. It's, like yeah. who can even say they're a lesbian anymore? Not lesbians. Everyone. It seems like if you say you're a lesbian, you're probably like a man, <laughs> you're, or you're a turf. Yeah, but uh, it's really sh like because I'm on TikTok a lot, which is a lot of younger people are on TikTok, mostly teenagers and stuff, and it's become really unsettling the amount of men who sometimes don't even, they're not even trying, they're just like wearing a dress, but they still like have facial, whatever. And who are making videos talking about how genital preferences are rooted in transphobia. Like I just saw one the other day where this man was talking about, who identifies as a lesbian, by the way, talking about how he overcame his genital preferences for women as if that somehow makes it okay to like, like good, congrats, you're bisexual, I don't know, whatever. And he was telling people like that, you know, and he brought up trauma as if genital preferences are usually rooted in trauma and that they need to be um, de like deconstructed. And I was like, where have we heard this before? You know, mm. like homosexuals used to be told that their uh, sexually deviant behavior was most likely rooted in childhood trauma or neglect. And that with the proper course of therapy that we could deconstruct their problematic sexuality. And I'm just like, this is literally conversion therapy, except that you're making it woke. And and it's all over TikTok, all of it, like all over. It's crazy. And there's an extra layer of gaslighting because now we've got lesbians who say, I call myself a lesbian. They actually are attracted to women and not men. But then they say, in my queer circle, in my LGBT groups, if I'm not attracted to trans women, if I don't date trans women, I can't call myself a lesbian. And mm -hmm. so it's like, Every time there's another layer of, of gas. They think there's something wrong with them. And they think they, I've seen them ask men doing these videos, like lesbians are commenting, being like, how do I get, how can I help myself get over this? I'm like, oh my goodness. Like that is so terrible. These teenage 16 year old lesbians feel like they're bigots because they don't want to sleep with men. It's like absolutely insane. Yeah. You know, this, this period of time where it's like, people are saying that genital preferences are bigoted and and you can unlearn your gen these are actually i'm going to do quotes because these are quotes you can unlearn your genital preferences you know it, it's like this idea that you can think your way out of it you could pray your way out of it you're right where have we heard this before hmm mm -hmm. sounds sounds awfully familiar doesn't it except yeah. now we've wrapped it up in a pretty little rainbow uh, and like, been just... like oh this is so progressive you can unlearn it. We can fix you, you know? Yeah, like as if, you. as if lesbians are attracted to she, her stickers or something. Like, well, exactly, <laughs> or, or like, why do we need to be fixed? Yeah, it's why ridiculous. Like to accommodate the feelings of a dysphoric male? Absolutely not, no. <laughs> I spoke out previously when I was on a dating app called Hinge, which out of all the dating apps seemed to be a little more sophisticated than the others. And I was, permanently banned because on my profile um i said um uh, i think it was like the three things that i look for in a date or something and i was like 
that you're into Love Island, that you turn up on time and that you're a biological woman. The biological woman got me banned for life from a dating site. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to want that. And it's like, oh my but God. Not <laughs> but this happened last year. So it's like, where are we in 2020 where I, a lesbian, cannot say openly that I'm only interested in biological women? It's actually really rapey. It's really, really rapey. It's yeah. really concerning. And just like you said, um, it, I, I'm really concerned for younger lesbians because I'm at the age, I'm 30, I'm 30, sorry, I'm 43. I can happily tell people to fuck off and, and happily will tell people to fuck off. But these younger lesbians, would I have been that way when I was that age, when I was like 16, 17? Yeah, and, they succumb I, to the peer pressure a lot more and they feel guilty and they they care what other people think a lot more. And so they're super susceptible to that. It's really yeah. bad. And yeah. you're be I think a, a lot of them are starting to identify, sorry, go ahead. No, I think a lot of them are starting to identify as asexual because they just don't want to deal with any of it, and that's it. just stresses them out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you're going to be accused of being a bigot for being a lesbian, then you're going to want to fit in because if you're accused of being a bigot, then you're just being pushed out of this community. And you know, you may already be suffering from homophobia from your community or from your parents, or who knows. But then you're, you know, the, 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 the community that you should think that you're going to be part of, you're going to be expelled from that because you're not going to allow them to essentially rape you. Um, it, it's really concerning. I do feel sorry for the younger lesbians, but I think my my approach to it is is when I see these men doing those things, as, as, as you said, somewhere on on TikTok and stuff, just expose them, just you like, know. harass them, shame them. But That's then I would come out. Pub, that would be me. I have forty four thousand followers on TikTok, and uh, and I. Oh gosh, I'm super nervous because also there's a lot of the followers I have on the, online followed me because of the top surgery thing looking for advice to do the same thing. And I'm kind of like, I'm just really afraid to um, criticize things too much because it would just publicly out me and then I would be doxxed and then it, people I, people would call me a turf. And then I almost got fired. One, I got, actually I did get fired from one of my jobs because there was a lot of stress around somebody who had found a public, um, like a group of Facebook group that I was in for gender discourse. And like, they tried to tell my boss that I had to get fired. And it was like, it was crazy. <laughs> Because I work at gay nightclubs and bars and all kinds of stuff, and they would they would just fire me if I was if I was outed like that. So it's hard. It's hard to see it and then be like, I really want to not, to just just to, to do something, but I just also am so afraid of being twenty five and ruining my social life and losing so many friends. I just I wish I didn't care so much, but it's really hard. Well, you have to be willing to watch your life go up in flames. Yeah. yeah. Back back when I came came forward, I think there was like just a, a couple of handfuls of people who were willing to put out their their face and their name and talk about this. I was one of those. My life did go up in flames. I mean, I I was dropped by a a publication that was once a lesbian publication that now as of the last year is like an LGBT. Q publication. I was one of their own, uh, only women of color writers. They have like, at the time they had like one black woman, one Hispanic woman. I think I was like their only Arab writer. And their whole thing is, oh, we're here to uplift women of color voices. Okay. I was also like, they don't have a lot of award-winning writers. I was one of their award-winning writers. You think they thought twice? Mm. You know, they were like, bye. Yeah, but on a good note, the tide is turning. Yeah. Certainly in this country. Yeah. The tide is turning. So you stay quiet as long as you feel the need to. I think there's enough of us out here that have set set our worlds on, on fire. Like if don't feel like you have to set your world on fire too, because it, it is true. There's truth to it that that it does mess things up it makes it harder like when you get a job you have to worry like are they gonna find me online no. are they i'm gonna have to work at sports bars i'm gonna have to work at sports bars after that right exactly <laughs> you have to I, I know oh my gosh oh. so it's a real fear that you have and it's and it's valid <laughs> um, it's gonna happen though i mean i'm doing things like this now with my full name on there i'm right admining, I was gonna I'm, say. I'm, I'm, I'm admitting um like Instagrams and, and Facebook groups that are totally like, you know, like that. <laughs> and I'm starting to tell people little bits at a time, just like to see how they just feel them out. I'm actually kind of surprised at how many um, lesbians and like women that I can 
talk to and kind of say things to and they just aren't offended by it at the least or they say yeah you know that makes sense and they're just like i just don't think about it or it stresses me out and they just don't want to be a part of it because of course it's easier to just be uh sun, 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 sunshine and rainbows to everybody and be accepting and make everybody feel good so they don't want to be a part of it but they agree and they're not offended it's usually trans people and men that tend to be offended the most but <laughs> I agree with the, your, your word's going to go out in flame, but there is a, a life on the other side of it, you know, and there's a lot of us now uh, compared to a few years ago and, you know, a lot of women who have spoken out more publicly have lost their previous social circle, part of it, and they've gained another one. And they've also gained a dedication to activism that, you know, is giving us, I think, purpose. When, when we start talking, it's... Uh, it, it life it changed completely your life so welcome you know honestly well done yeah i know i'm yeah, gonna I just hit, <laughs> i'm gonna develop a support system and i'm gonna network a little bit more and meet more people that are similar because that's cause it's gonna be isolating and so i have to prepare for when i do do it to have some sort of support system behind me so it's not too overwhelming emotionally yeah the support system i don't find is for me it hasn't been a big deal my friends are still my friends i've there's not been one single person that i've gone to and been like look the majority of the kids who are being pushed to transition at a young age are statistically um, gay, lesbian, and bisexual. This is medicalized gay conversion th therapy. We shouldn't be doing double mastectomies on, on kids. I haven't had anybody be like, yeah, let's do it anyway. Like, no, nobody rational has actually been like, yeah, let's, let's chop up the children. Like, that's not going to happen. You know, but in in terms of a job, in terms of, you know, we've, we're seeing a lot of writers get kicked out of publishing for speaking up. In terms of that, it's a realistic fear. Um, I And that's why I don't really come down on people when they're like, I need to stay um, private. I need to not tell people who I am. I, But I also at the same time, it is like, yeah, show your face. The more of us that show our faces, the less taboo it becomes. But at the same time, I hesitate to tell anybody, your world's not going to go up in flames. Like, I'll be the first one to warn them and be like, yeah, your life might go up in flames a little bit. If it I'm not going to lie about that. I think and I will tell them my own experience and be like, this is this is what happened with me. Yeah. If it helps, I think, like, the tide is really turning. It's it's. I mean, if, if you look where we are, certainly in the UK, from where we are from, like, a year ago, 18 months mm -hmm. ago, so many more people are coming out. And what's really kicking off in this country now is that the gay men are getting on board. And the reason yeah. the gay men are getting on board is suddenly trans women and trans men are popping up on Grindr and the gay men don't like it. And the gay men are being told that they need to fuck vagina and if they don't, they're bigots. And then all I know, sudden, they, they call themselves the, bonus hole boys. It's awful. All, <laughs> it's of so sudden, awful. all of a sudden, completely changing the debate and all these gay men who kind of were just, we don't care, it's the lesbians thinking like, they're just bigots, they're just turfs, they're just hairy lesbians. Now, that a heterosexual woman is about to win Mr. Gay UK, all of a sudden they get uh, And it's brilliant. It's brilliant for us because it's really like, now you're having gay bars going up against each other. You're, you know, you're having prominent gay businessmen who are just at each other's throat because some of them are very pro-trans. The others are like, no, we're like homosexual men. We don't want women in our establishments because we don't want to fuck them. That's okay. And then them being told that they're bigots. So it's, it, it's really gonna, I think, the next kind of few months are going to be really, really interesting. Um, but I think, again, I think the tide has turned. The cards are coming down all in one go. There's lots of uh, important um, uh, cases going on, some legal cases going on that are going to be going to set precedent. Um, and I think things are very much going in our favour, certainly in this country. I don't know about anywhere else, but certainly in this country, I think we're leading the way. Mm. Yeah, I've been saying for a few years, no one's going to listen till men say something. And it's really sad that that's the way the world works. But that is the way the world works is nobody yeah. listens till men say something first. So you have lesbians being like, yo, red flag, red flag. But who's listening? As soon as the men come on board, then yeah, people start to take it. It's like, what a world we're living in, huh? <laughs> It baffles me every single day, <laughs> the world that we're living in. Can All I just right, say well, one last thing about going public with your face? It's super, super scary, but one benefit is you meet so many awesome women. And I've been in this debate for like 
two years now and I have so many new friends and I love it and it's amazing. So that is one yeah. positive about it. <laughs> yes, the water true, is true. warm. <laughs> true. Right, okay, well, the next uh, uh, discussion point from Summer is controversially uh, transitioning children. Yeah, I'm not really like well versed in a lot of, because I've only been thinking about this kind of stuff for like the past like two or three years, but that's definitely been one of my main concerns because I, most people don't even know, like I, that 12 year olds are getting top surgery because I saw that on TikTok just the other day, a 13 year old from Texas got top surgery. And then there's all like children getting puberty blockers. And then when you research it and then you realize that it's like not FDA approved and that it's used to treat like prostate cancer and precocious puberty. And then people are just like, oh yeah, it's basically just putting your body on pause. It's And then like, that's absolutely not what's happening. And then uh, like fertility issues, if kids are given puberty blockers before I think Tanner stage four and we're giving it at like Tanner stage two or something like that. It's just, I don't know. They, the fact that we think that kids are not mature enough or self-aware enough to make decisions like sleeping with an adult or getting married or drinking or doing drugs or driving a car or owning, or owning a house. And then we're like, but they know how to like change their body for the rest of their life. Yeah, that's just, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and this is the topic that got me in a lot of trouble. And I, I'd say like, just being like, you know, uh, uh, several years ago, the first to be like drawing a connection between what we know about cognitive brain development and the ethics behind transitioning children and putting it out there and saying it constantly, putting it in articles in the mainstream, slipping it into the mainstream left. That kind of is part of what made me enemy number one and why my book is no longer available to the lesbian population. You know, like these little things that you do to get the word out there they do get you into a lot of trouble when it comes to your career you know you have to kind of be willing to get out there and say it but you know 80 percent or 75 percent of the kids would otherwise grow up to be lgb adults and 85 percent of them would grow up to be lgb or straight adults that is the majority so when yeah. you're talking about medicalizing children for for 15 percent chance that they would ultimately be ultimately be transsexual um yeah. as adults now you're talking about gay conversion therapy we had a responsibility to speak up about it we had a responsibility to draw those connections and say this is not even remotely ethical to to be doing these things think about you at, at age age 12. I was wearing shirts with ducks on them. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I had ducks on my shirt at 12. I was a little kid, <laughs> you know, think about yourself at that age. And now think about double mastectomies and, yeah, like, and thinking that you can make that kind of decision. And I if I had been raised in the wrong family at 12, I was super tomboyish. Like I was just raised in Kansas City, Missouri in a Christian family. So that's why that was not a thing. But I also was coming to the realization that I was gay, but I wasn't taught about what gay was. So I thought maybe I was just a boy that I was, or I was meant to be a boy. And that it was like, why am I so boyish? I must just be a boy. That's just, that's just, that made more sense to me because I didn't know what gay was. And if I was raised in a family of today, uh, <laughs> I mean, I have no idea. My parents, even if they didn't want to, they probably would be forced to, right? Because it's child abuse now to not go along with it in a lot of ways, and which is really scary. Yeah. <laughs> This is why it's terrifying for the lesbian community because we could all picture ourselves being in that scenario. And we're living in a time where people are like, this is my two-year-old toddler who's transgender. And it's like- Oh my gosh, yes. You know, <laughs> we're popping these labels onto toddlers right now. And if you think about it, like if someone walked around and was like, this is my toddler lesbian, everyone would look at you like you had five heads. Yeah. But to say that your child is a transsexual- Because they toddler, don't like early- A transsexual closely. toddler, that is high fashion. That is yeah. the next accessory that people are carrying out into the runway. What has happened in our world where we think it's okay to label a two-year-old as a transsexual? 
And I'm going to say transsexual because they took the sex out on purpose. That was a strategic move to reroute our brain, to stop thinking about it in a certain way and to make it innocent. That is why they started saying gender. Yeah. But it's like to remove, but let's call it like it is. Stop saying you got a transgender toddler. You're telling me you have a transsexual to toddler. Use yeah, them the way they like, should be used. I, it's, it's, yeah. not like it's, gay yeah, it's just pure child abuse. I mean, I, I, uh, 100%. Saying, I grew up in an Arab country where it was way more fun to be a boy than it was to be a girl. Um, and I looked like a boy, like to the point where I would have to use a boy's toilet if I was out and about because if I went into a girl's one they'd be like umshi umshi what are you doing in here you're a you're a boy so I look like a boy for the longest time um and if you asked me if I wanted to be a boy I probably would have said yes because I'm in an Arab country where it's way more fun to be a boy than it is to be a girl there's certain expectations to be a girl I had brothers I looked like a boy I had short hair I was very very tomboyish um but thank god for my parents who just let me be they just let me be they suspected I was a lesbian and lo and behold, I grew up to be a fabulous lesbian. Had I been born now or been brought up in like in, in this age, they would have had me straight, or not them, not my parents, but the school or whoever would have had me straight. Yeah, your counselors would have like told your parents yeah, that they had to. And the, yeah. the bloody Tavistock getting bloody uh, puberty bockers thrown down my throat. And it is, it is pure, there's no other word for it than child abuse. Because if you had a child come to you and say that they were anorexic and that they- that I they say that all the time. Oh my gosh, I say that all the time. I'm like, if there was a kid with an eating, like an eating disorder or body dysmorphic disorder and the therapist said, you know what? Your feelings of hating your body and being fat and ugly are totally valid. They're yeah. super valid. And you know what? The only thing we can do to help you is to right. surgically modify your body. And if we don't do it, you're probably gonna kill yourself. What if we, like, if we did that, we can't fathom doing that. Why is this okay? It's not different. But it, it's yeah, and what you said about the um, feeling peer pressure, you said earlier about peer pressure, and that's something with the prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that isn't fully developed until you're, you know, 25, um, or around 25, is that, yeah, that is the part of the brain where peer pressure is going to impact you, where you don't fully understand repercussions, you don't understand... <laughs> Um, it, it's the part of the brain that forms a sense of identity, even. Yeah, so, so like part it of your brain that forms a sense of identity that can process things like peer pressure, that understands repercussions, isn't even developed yet. And they're making these decisions for kids. It is medicalized assault, period. Absolutely. Yeah, this, Absolutely. Now that when we're talking about gay uh, gay therapy, we have to remember that, the, uh, at least in the UK, uh, uh, correct me, I think it's similar in the US, but it's girls. Like the, the, the increase on girl transitioning yep. is exponential. So I'm not saying it's not against boys as well, but <laughs> we see a very clear assault on lesbianism right now. And, um, it, it, you know, because we're talking about lesbian visibility and it's Lesbian Visibility Week, I think it, it, it needs to be put into that context, you know, of anti-lesbianism, of like systematic anti-lesbianism. And that's where also the Kira Bell's case uh, is really, really, really important this year, has been really important. And, um, and we've been saying and thinking for a very long time that when uh, detransition women start talking start speaking about their experience, start bringing the first cases, they will be game changers. And I really think that they are. Um, so I'm, I'm, I was really, really grateful, like really happy that this <clears> is happening. <throat> and also I think we need to talk more about uh, detransitioners. Like this, there's loads of really great initiatives. Um, there's this uh, really great group in Europe called Post Trans, uh, who's, um, yeah, they, they're creating all these literature, these leaflets for, for girls, so you know, we are in a stage where now also younger, uh, younger people, younger even younger women, uh, who have not like I don't know, like the, the youngest one, don't seem to be completely fooled by the trans rhetoric, like the twenty years old might be, but maybe sixteen year old might not be, and mm -hmm. you know, we're yeah, I, I think we're in a very interesting time when it comes to that as well. Um, it's a generation generational thing too. Um, so I'll be really looking forward to see the younger generation dealing with that. Yeah, I always say this isn't going to age well. This is not going to age well. <laughs> like what we're, what's happening right now isn't going to age well. And the people who are being quiet about it, they need to really consider 
and think about this stuff. They need to think about the statistics. They need to think about how statistically most of these kids would otherwise grow up to be gay. And they need to really consider their silence because as I said, I've never come across somebody who's like, let's drug and chop up the children in real life. Once you explain it to them, once you explain cognitive brain development, once you explain the prefrontal cortex and you talk about the science and the statistics behind this, they know, they know that this isn't right. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna age well. Or who knows where, where we're headed in this world maybe we're all going to become robots because that's that's like the next step isn't it isn't it trying to struggle yeah it is so all on that happy note <laughs> um, shall we go uh angela is going to tell us about uh what's been happening in france and germany over the weekend yeah i wanted to bring a little bit of a european um perspective um I'm French myself and at the out we feel like kind of part French and German and we've been keeping an eye on what's going on. Um, so I don't know if you had, um, like France is a very interesting uh, country case in a sense because nothing is much happening in terms of turf movement, like no, no big feminist organization has come out. Uh, there's only that I know of two uh, women individual who are speaking against it. One is Christine Delphi. Uh, she's a very well-known second wave li li women's liberation, you know, lesbian. And the other one is Marguerite Stern. She has been targeted several times, uh, including one time at Women, um, what is it called? Women's International Day, where she was protesting with some um, um, prostitution survivors, and she's been really badly um, targeted by um, by queers and assaulted. And there was this really nasty graffiti on the wall that said "Kill Turf," basically "Save Save Trans Kill Turf" or something really horrible. Uh, so that's a bit of the context. Um, I, I've seen not be like not a lot of organizations speaking against that violence in France. Um, last Saturday, because it's Lesbian uh, Visibility Week, last Saturday there was a dike march in Paris. And it's a march that is organized by a mixed group in the sense that it's a lesbian group with some trans identified male in it. So it's a, it's a mixed march in effect. Um, there was uh, a bloke in that march who was wearing a t-shirt very proudly that said, kill all turf. No one challenged him. Yeah. Again, no lesbian organization, no feminist organization that I know of, you know, publicly condemned that. So, you know, it's pretty bad. Um, and a couple of other things happened uh, in, in the Lesbian Visibility Week uh, in, in Marseille and in Toulouse where organizations have been banned, lesbian organizations have been banned from the official pride, you know, dyke moth festivities, uh, including uh, uh, an organization for lesbian refugees because they were called TERF every time. So that's pretty bad. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward for more lesbians to speak out. And there has been uh, um, an open letter published in the in the woman in sorry in the French press in the national press where a few lesbians have um, publicly condemned the sexual violence that they've been subjected to by men who identify as trans. So I wanted to highlight that because it's it's a big thing, and uh, it's been going around. Now this week, now in Germany. Um, there's been a lot of uh, hoo-ha about a lesbian feminist uh, festival called the, the Lesbian mm -hmm. Spring Gathering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, a gathering that's been happening since 1974, if I'm correct. So very um, lesbian feminist, radical in its root, women, uh, obviously women-centered and um, not queer. <laughs> Uh, and every year the committee, like the organizing group changes. And this year the group is very strongly radical feminist. They have a few speakers who are lesbian, uh, who will speak about trans issues, including myself. And uh, I know Julia Beck is speaking there, some women from Spin Effects. And, um, and the program has been released this week and they've been absolutely attacked by the, the German queer lobby. Uh, they have been politicians who spoke out against them. They have been threatened to um, have all their funding removed. So um, there's quite a lot of things. So if you wanted to support uh, a lesbian organization at this moment, that would be the place to go. I will give the link so it, it can be shared. It's called uh, LFT. And um, 
they've actually uh, like a, a trans activist in Germany have drawn a map <laughs> which very much look like a map of the international network of powerful lesbians because they've actually named all the women who are involved uh, in the LFT and links with famous turfs. Uh, so it's it's completely mad. Um, it, the, the committee was organizing this committee to make it happen, so it will happen for sure. But you know, if you want to um, support this, it would be really, really amazing to do so. So um, I'll put the link in there. That was my uh, international point. <laughs> the homophobia is just unreal around these pride marches where lesbians are now being told not to show up at the pride march. I mean, this has been going on for a few years now. This isn't like it's it's this whole like if if you're a lesbian don't show up to the dyke march you know if you can't accept the idea that lesbians love penis don't show up to the dyke march like where are we at people what what has happened to boundaries what has happened to being allowed to have pride for being a lesbian like it's the the stuff that angela is describing it's like happening everywhere it is unacceptable on every possible level and lesbians are scared to say anything you say something you become uh, a, a turf which is a very violent slur that's associated with rape and death threats so it's like these these young lesbians are coming up in a world where it's like you say something you're you're looking at a world of I can't, it baffles me. I can't even. I know, it takes your breath away, doesn't it? I mean, it just it just leaves you with your mouth open. Exactly. I have no words to describe how bad I feel for these kids right now. But they, I think the trans activists really like target women's marches, lesbian marches. They get a particular kick of being there, of being violent and against women, against lesbians, knowing that nobody will challenge them. This is male power. Let's be very clear. This yep. is male power and this is male violence against mm -hmm. against women and against lesbians. Absolutely. We're not only are women an easy target, but lesbians are at the bottom of the totem pole of the LGBTQ XYZ, you know, like ever expanding umbrella. You know, lesbians have become the minority within the groups that were initially set up to protect us. Mm -hmm. We're now like you don't hear from us. You and only hear. It goes yeah. back away. It's uh, that that isn't new. It's uh, right. It's nothing new, but the violence behind it, oh, like yeah, the, yeah. this idea of like kill her, set her on fire, like, and then being able to just show up in these shirts that say "kill him, set him on fire" with bats, with like these, these uh, weapon weapon symbols to threaten people who speak up like what the fuck is going on like I've no always, lesbians I've, have to say something about this even if you have to do it from underneath uh, an anonymous profile like you got to say something this isn't right for these kids though to be to be coming up in that kind of environment i think we're certainly in the uk we're fighting back um and you're seeing a lot more i've like my tactic is always just to be rather than go on the defensive, which is what we've been doing for a very long time in this in this campaign, just go on the offense. Oh, yeah. Just just sort of throw it in their face that a lot of them are just perverts. As you say, it's, it's just male violence. A lot mm -hmm. of it is kink. When you've got men dressed as gimp dogs at Pride mm -hmm. and there's children petting them on the head, it's disgusting and it needs to be called out. Um, but I think certainly in, in this country, in the, in the last year or so, we're a lot more open we're having a lot more meetings and we are going on the attack a lot more and we're really just putting a mirror up to this like to their ideology and showing it for what it is which is quite violent and luckily i think in the uk you are getting the media getting it now but a lot of well-respected journalists in the uk who work for and i don't mean the guardian obviously no. but for work for respected um media outlets are getting it now and they are writing stories actually even the guardian have done a few stories where i've been like oh fuck, how did they get away with that so people are getting it now and your, your normal person, if you want to put it like that. I think um, the transitioning children has really kind of pushed it into the into the limelight. Also, um, the sport issue as well, men in female sport, that's really kind of pushed it into people's faces. And where's people before 
like the position I had five years ago, if you'd have asked if, if trans women are women, I wouldn't have even thought about it and just gone, yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? I, I you know, it, it, it doesn't impact me. It doesn't affect my life. They seem to, I guess, five years ago, it was transsexuals. Um, whereas now, because we realise what's at stake and that our rights are being taken away and that we're being forced to like lady dick, it's a whole... And then it doesn't thing. mean the same thing. It doesn't mean the same thing at all. So now you ask me, I'm going to think about it. And when I think about it, it's like, well, of course they're fucking not women. Of course they're not. And I think that's where most people are now. And we are going on the attack. We are having meetings. We are calling out the misogynists, the violent people. Um, and the media is starting to slowly get it and the law is slowly starting to get it. And thankfully, we have some brilliant feminist lawyers in this country who are just not going to sit back and, and let these laws become law in this country without any debate. We almost had the GRA reforms that were pretty much pushed through by all the major parties. Labour are the worst. And I say that as a Labour Party member, almost pushed through without any debate whatsoever. And it was only right at the last minute when left-wing women, trade unionists, came forward and stopped that happening. And it's thanks to those left-wing feminists who have stopped those GR reforms. And if anything, it seems that we're actually going to peel a bit of it back as well and almost be in a better position because it's now it's, 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 it's public now. And it's not something that people didn't really know what was going on. And yet these laws are changing, but we're not aware of it. So we're aware of it now. And we're aware that this isn't good and this is dangerous and this is inappropriate. We need to do something about it. And people yeah, are... the, the progress in the UK has been incredible. Yeah. And the, the relationship between the UK and the US over the last several years, working together as a team to have each other's backs has been amazing. That, that allyship that developed between lesbians over there and lesbians here, feminists over there, feminists over here to amplify each other, to make sure like we were all having each other's backs because this is a global issue. We can't just think about this country and that country and this country. You have to think of this as a global issue. You know, the woman who's in Iran who has to, who has to wear a hijab, um, you know, she's my sister, period. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't be like this country, that, that country when it comes to these issues. And the way that the US and the UK came together on this, was a beautiful thing. You know, I was added to a group. Um, this also got me into a lot of hot water. These things I, I've done have gotten me into a lot, a lot of hot water. I was added to a group of detransitioners. I was the only non-detransitioner allowed into the group. This was two years ago. And they said, how do we win this? And I said, you go after informed consent. And then they renamed the, the, group, <laughs> the group chat informed consent. I was like, this is this, you go after in, informed consent. This is how you go after it. This is why you go after it. This is what you bring up when you go after it. You cannot possibly make these decisions until you reach full cognitive brain development. To say that it's informed consent is a complete misnomer. You technically, scientifically cannot give informed consent on this. And that got me into, it's another one of those things that got me booted that, sorry, lesbians, you can't get my book anymore. <laughs> You know, and speaking up about this stuff is hardcore and we have each other's backs and we've been doing this between the UK and the US, this kind of like back and forth sisterhood, camaraderie, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we've had to, you know, like I'm looking around. I've made some good friends even within this group right here, you know, and and Canada. I, I'm hoping Canada, Canada is a hot mess right now. I just did an article where a, a father's in, sitting in prison, you know, um, he he was told by a judge, like, if you call your daughter, your daughter, if you call her, she and her, we're going to we're going to come for you. They came for him. He's sitting in jail. And it's like with the suffragettes that, you know, yeah, you might say that saw somebody say this online the other day, like they got a ticket for walking on the sidewalk. We all know that's not why they got the ticket. You know, yeah, so you're seeing parents, parents getting Thanks into trouble. Sorry, we one thing, as to to for each earlier, other. you were saying no one ever stands up to these men, but you stood up to the men when you protested pride and you took it right to the heart of the beast. And that is the reason why I'm here. So I want to ask. Is there anything else we can do to help you? Because you stood up to them and you inspired me. Yeah, thank you, Ajah. Do you know what I want to say? I, I, hear, I hear a lot of sisters saying that it's really hard. I mean, I think, again, as I said this week, 
patriarchy's been on overdrive. It's, it's, it's hard. Like it's hard for all of us. As I think our role as activists is to keep the motivation, to look after ourselves. But also, I find myself when I'm in action, when I'm planning actions, when I'm doing action, that I'm not de depressed at all. So I want to finish. You know, I, I really want to say, do something. You know. You might not be able to come out under your name. You might not put your picture to it, but there's something you can do. Everybody can do something. And, and as Lucy was saying, we are here in, this, in the UK in that situation, which is better than it's ever been because we've been working on it for some of us for more than 10 years. And, you know, we can't afford to just be depressed. We have to carry on and, and women join. So please do something, anything. I mean, even a small thing, any sticker count, any meeting, however small, count um you know uh any any uh, like you have we have to see ourselves as the kind of grain of salt in 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 the clog of in the cog of patriarchy because they have the money they have the power they have yeah we will never have that so there's no point in trying to have that what we can do you know is what we what we can do in our, in our level and how we you know what do we have we are right first of all we are right they are loonies we are right we are determined because our life depends on it. So, we, you know, we have that strength that they don't have. We are plenty. We are invisible. And because of that, we are unpredictable. You know, I really call everybody to do something with this. These are skills and, and strength that we have that we can all do uh, something today. Uh, and I really just, please, you know, it's the time to pull together and, and do something, anything. Fantastic, Angela. It always makes my, my makes me tingle when I hear women speak like that. I, I say, you know, when we when we organised Pride, we had no idea what yeah, was going yeah, yeah. I really yeah. thought we've got twenty seconds. We're going to get chucked out. This is going to have no impact. But we were so desperate, we just did it. We had no idea this was going to end up like this. We had no idea we were going to get any media or bad or good. We didn't know. We just did it because we had nothing else. What what can what can you do right now? You know, in the time that you have, with the money that you have, it's probably not a lot to make the most impact, the most damage into that shit. Do it. Yay. That's it. You did it. And that's why I'm here anyway. And I'm sure many women are here for that very reason. So uh, we're, we're, we're conscious of the time at the moment. It's getting on to about, um, we've been on for over an hour. And um, building on Angela's rousing uh, uh, call to action. Lesbian uh, visibility. Uh, Lesbian visibility, but I also like to. Um, uh, I noticed that Lucy, sorry, Lucy's wearing the uh, LGBA Alliance t shirt, and of course, probably one of the best bits of news we've had in terms of the uh, uh, you know, same sex fight back is that on the 20th of April 2021, they finally, after a 12 months of battling, finally got the charitable status that they've been desperately trying to get for the last year. Despite 12 months of the most extraordinary arguments put up against them, and it took so long, and I'm not entirely sure whether it's the usual process for um, the Charitable Commission to put out a 4,000 word document justifying why they were giving them the, 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 the charitable status, but they did. So well done for, to, to Kate and Bev, and uh, the, 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 obviously the other team and stuff around them, but it's mainly uh, uh, Kate and Bev my God, they've worked so hard. I don't think they've slept since they started this two years ago. So, uh, yeah, as, as I say, building on what Angela said, I think, you know, that, that, that things are changing. What Lucy's saying, the tide is changing. It is shit. But, you know, hey, we're women. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Yeah. Lesbians need to just show up. Yeah. Just show yeah. up. You know, and yeah. it, lesbian erasure is real. I'm, I've, I've said recently I'm lesbian erasure in real time. I had a book. It's not out on shelves anymore. And I'm not sure it's ever going to be again. We can't let this happen. We need to show up. Yeah. We need to show up. We need to support each other. Yeah, because no one else is. Exactly. <laughs> we need to build. Sorry, Angela, go on. No, I wanted to say that, you know, an action, simple action like the Pride in London thing, I, I keep on saying it's it's a simple action because it is a very simple action. We keep on receiving messages, even now, of women mm -hmm. saying, I came out because of this. Not mm -hmm. even about the trans, like yeah. also about the trans, but I came out. It's just putting yourself there somewhere that somewhere I can see, oh, this is what a lesbian is. 
I've never seen one. The first time I saw a lesbian was 25. I, you know, I'm 23 now. I've never seen a lesbian in I was 25. Think about that. Huh? 2021. So show yourself. And like Angela said, they're wrong. We're right. And their actions are just getting more and more extreme. We did a, a meeting just before the first lockdown. It was about two weeks before we went into lockdown. And it was, um, it was a meeting in support of LGB Alliance and Women's Place UK when the Labour Party decided to sign a pledge to try and get people kicked out of the Labour Party like me, who supported LGB Alliance or Women's Place UK. So we organised a meeting and because of my um, involvement um, with Grenfell, the venue was right opposite Grenfell. It was literally in the shadow of Grenfell. It was about 30 yards away, 50 yards away. So we had the meeting, it was sold out. The lunacy of these trans activists, they were outside in the shadow of Grenfell, letting off smoke bombs. Now you need to remember Grenfell, like is like, it's, 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 it's basically a standing mass grave where 72 men, women and children burn to death in their beds. And then you have these utter narcissistic, nasty morons standing at the bottom of it. Some of them wearing gimp suits, some of them wearing strap-ons litting off smoke bombs in the shadow of Grenfell Tower. You had locals coming out of their houses, begging them to stop doing it because it was triggering and it was upsetting and they were being told to fuck off. Mm -hmm. This is the mentality of these people. But the good thing about that meeting was, A, it was a brilliant meeting. We had some brilliant speeches and you know, it was, it was absolutely amazing. But it also put a mirror up to these, these trans activists. And it was something that we were the next day able to say, look at these people, they have no respect for anyone. It's not about what we're saying, they don't like it. Um, it's, it's just about them. You know, the fact that they can stand opposite a mass grave of 72 people and little smoke bombs and not care just shows you their mentality and their tactics and just how they work. And it, again, it, it just exposes them for what they are. And it makes normal people who are kind of like, oh, I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm not really interested. Just look at their tactics Look at our tactics. Look at JK Rowling putting something on Twitter, a very reasonable statement talking about her sexual abuse and then having her receive rape threats. You know, they are wrong. We are right. We're not going to stop. We're going to win. Hey. Well, I think on that, that, that very rousing note, we shall bring this, this uh, event to an end. Um, so I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to um, come here tonight and expressing yourselves. Uh, passionately and um, also I, I forgot at the, be at the beginning I was meant to of course say the usual YouTube thing of um, link subscribe and share forgot that bit and also to thank uh, make more noise who've uh, put this platform on look out for them in terms of um, uh, uh, you know things that are coming up watch out for uh, make more noise that, that if you enjoyed this there's a hell of a lot more to come watch out so, for the lesbians Yes, yeah, coming. Coming. <laughs> the, 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 the creeping dancing lesbians, as we always say, were everywhere. So on that happy note, if we all want to give a, a, a little wave and a goodbye, we'll bring this uh, latest episode of Womb with a View to an end. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>